Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audi Cycling YouTube channel where today I am going to be looking at the next round of the Super Classico Series, the Grand Prix of Wallonie. This is a race that usually ends in some sort of a bunch sprint. I think the last time we didn't see that was when Chris Nalens won it a few years ago. Laporte won it last year, head of Barguil. The big thing is that we've got Van der Poel in this race, which is a real red herring because Van der Poel is such a dangerous rider that I expect a lot of us to be wanting to pick him, but he's been very unproven recently. We haven't really seen much of him, but with the world champs just around the corner, I would be expecting him to be in decent form considering that he seems to be the big challenger for the Netherlands. So I would be quite surprised if Van der Poel didn't do good here, but they do also have an alternative option in Jasper Philipsen, who has been climbing incredibly well recently. If you look back to the Tour of Denmark, the Beamer Classic, for example, all races which have had hills in them, he's been very competitive in those sorts of races. He's not just an out-and-out -out sprinter. He's very capable of getting over these shallower gradient climbs, which are going to be present in the Grand Prix of Wallonie, and then sprint out for the victory. Of course, it is going to be a bit more of an uphill sprint on cobbles. I think that perhaps he'd prefer like a flat sprint after all this, but I think that Philipson is still a decent choice. It might be just on, on the cusp of what he's capable of, but I do think that he is still a good option if you didn't want to go with Van der Poel, for example. For Navamart, this is where a big thing for me is going to come in here, is that these guys who have come from Canada, of course they've been doing the GP of Quebec and Montreal, I'm not sure how these guys are going to be responding after all. The race finished on, I think it was the 11th was Montreal, and then they'd have to fly back to Europe, and it's just, you know, I'm not sure how they're going to be dealing with the jet lag. You know, they might, they might have had really good form in over in Canada, but I'm not sure how they'll be responding here. If you took that out of the question, I'd say that Van Avermaet is a good choice at 24, perhaps a little bit more expensive than I'd be liking him to be. Probably I'd be favouring riders like Barguil. Barguil, of course, came second in this race last year behind Christophe Laporte. A very strong rider on this kind of terrain. I'd say that Barguil is still a good choice. Narsen would be a good choice if you believe that the jet lag is going to have a big impact because he did really well at the Britannia Classic. He'd probably be the candidate for ag 2 r Citroen if Greg wasn't feeling up to it. Set my mark. Actually was doing pretty good in Montreal and, uh, and Quebec. Uh, I think he did better in Montreal, surprisingly, considering that there's more climbing in that race. But I think that he would be a really good candidate for Israel Premier Tech. Also would Dylan Turns, of course. Perhaps Dylan Turns might favour a bit more climbing and some steeper gradients. And for that, they might try and favour somebody like Corbin Strong, who, although he is on the start list, I don't think that he's on this list of riders in Vela Games just yet. Cockard did very good in a similar finish. I think it was the one, no, it wasn't one where Roglic crashed, but it was a very similar finish where Pedersen won in the Vuelta Espana. He came in second place. He's very good at these uphill grinding finishes. I think that he would be a great choice for a lot of teams, especially at 14 credits. That's quite cheap and very attainable for a lot of teams. You've got Amari Capio, a fast sprinter, but I'm not sure whether they'll be going for him or Barguil. I'd expect Barguil probably more than likely unless he's on a bad day. Dries de Bont, I think, will be working for Philipson and Van der Poel, whichever ones they decide to go for. Jasper de Boist has come in third place in this race in the past for the edition where Chris Nalens won. I think Stroyman came second and then Jasper de Boist came in third place. I think that Lotto really needs some good UCI points from this race and I think that de Boist is going to be the likely candidate to do that for them. Max Cantor is renowned for being a sprinter who can get over climbs. I'm not sure how he'd do on an uphill sprint. Perhaps they might favour Gonzalo Serrano, the recent winner of the Tour of Britain. He won a stage there ahead of Dylan Turns. Omar Fraile and Tom Pidcock. So obviously he's in a pretty strong kind of vein of form at the moment, but I'm just not sure how he does in one day races. Movistar perhaps might not favour these Belgian one day races, but I think Serrano fits the bill as somebody who should be doing quite well in this race. Eight point rider has got Biniam Gomai. Worth noting that he didn't take part in Montreal because of illness, so I'm not sure if that's still present. If it is still present, he's probably not going to be a great pick, but if on paper he fits this race down to the ground, he'd be a likely candidate to be contesting for the win, if not at the minimum a podium place. Then other eight point riders, you've got possibly Julian Simon, who can pull out some really good performances and has done that this year. But at the age of 36, he's getting on a little bit more. 
But I do think that he is probably the best option for Total Energies. He is the kind of rider who is very punchy and suits this type of finish. So I'd say that he is also a good choice for a lot of teams. Six point riders getting towards kind of like the cheaper options. There aren't too many that I am liking. If Corbin Strong is a six point rider, I'd say that he's likely going to be a good one for you to choose. Sylvain Monique was pretty good at uh, the Canadian races and also at the recent Deutschland Tour. But again, how is it going to be going with the jet lag? Uh, I'm just not too sure whether I might try and go with somebody else, for example. Marlene van den Berg, a rider who I'm very, very hyped up on, but just hasn't quite shown that quality this year. Although we did finish in 20th place at the Beamer Classic, so he does have some good climbing qualities, but I'm not sure how he'll deal with an uphill finish. I think that he'd certainly favour a flat finish. George Zimmerman at six points would be a great choice if Biniam Gomai isn't going to be firing on all cylinders. Zimmerman was the de facto guy at Montreal when Biniam wasn't there, and he actually did a very respectable performance. I think he was just outside the top 10. Axel Zangler would be another alternative to Cockard. I'm not sure what coffee this is going to be going and who they're going to be choosing, but Zangler's had a really good season, and it wouldn't surprise me if he pulled off a big result here and perhaps came on the podium, for example. And then four point riders, there aren't really too many who are like the look of. You've got Camille Bermeu, who won a stage of the Tour of Britain. Um, and then other than that, you're really looking at guys going for the breakaway or possibly getting assist points. Hugo Page, Hugo Page uh, for Wanty Gobert. Did pretty good at the Dauphiné from some reduced sprints, but I'm not sure how he'd be going here, for example. And then other than that, there's not really too many people. There's some zero point riders, which is kind of a, a funny thing. I'm sure George will fix that pretty soon. But let me know in the comments down below who are you thinking of going with? Is Van der Poel going to be worth it? What kind of, like, what are you expecting from Van der Poel in this race? I'm really just not too sure. That's why I'm throwing it to you guys. And all I'd like to say is to keep safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video tomorrow for Cop Sabatini. Salut! Yeah.